I yeah. didn't think we'd ever be in this position. And there's no, no sign of relief. No. My I mean, mood changes completely uh, the closer it gets to leaving for work. I never thought I'd have to wipe everything off when, before I get in the car, wipe everything off when I get home, get dressed or undressed in the garage. You can attach garages. <laughs> Thank in the God. back there and just run. <laughs> we, uh, we have an emergency. Emergency pending. COVID positive patient. A little over a month ago, we would respond to this and not have to wear a mask, not have to wear glasses, not have to bring in a gown. I'm just tired of wearing this mask, <laughs> honestly. My face hurts, my ears hurt, my eyes hurt. Maybe someday we can stop wearing them. Until then, we have to keep wearing it. Hope for the best. It's 1 a.m. We just got a call of a man with a high-grade fever. The paramedics that we've been riding with just went inside to check this guy out. We're not sure what other symptoms he may have, but it sounds a lot like COVID. Kelly Hornick and Ray Van Hevel are veteran first responders. They have more than 20 years of experience between them. They thought they'd trained for every kind of emergency. He feels hot. You doing okay? Can you talk? Then COVID-19 hit Michigan. Can you blink your eyes if you understand me? Good. He's almost done and then we're gonna get going, okay? Can you talk to us? The virus has killed more than 4,500 people in the state, the fourth highest death toll in the country. And most of those cases were here in Detroit. Hi. How's he doing, she asked. He's only like blinking yes and no. We're gonna get you in the bed, okay? Get you off the stretcher. Let me get the seatbelt off you. Yeah. All right, so we got a call respiratory rate. Right? He's in 31, I think. Yeah. What have the past few weeks been like for you and your team? Uh, a lot of ups and downs. We got everything that we need to, you know, keep ourselves safe. It's just a matter of uh, when is it going to end? Nobody knows. What is so crucial about the job that these guys do? They're the first ones to see it. They have to prepare themselves in somebody's home, you know, whether it's a clean, tidy little place or a hot mess. And they have to walk into it knowing nothing. He's been negative, but he's been in with positive patients, so. The whole so place. So the whole place is infected. I might need some caffeine, I think. Since March, Kelly and Ray have been working six, sometimes seven days a week and their shifts can stretch more than 16 hours a day, bogged down by a new decontamination process to clean up after suspected COVID cases. So far, 15 of their colleagues have tested positive for the virus. How much did you sleep today? Two, three hour naps. Yeah. That's what all I can do now, ever since the whole thing started. That's all I'm getting is about three hours. It's almost like there's a certain anxi anxiety, like going, even though you're at home, when there's no chance of getting a call. Oh yeah. So thinking about it, like, is it on me? Is it, am I gonna wake up with a cough cold? I did wake up with a cough this morning <laughs> and it was sinuses. <laughs> yeah. It, hopefully there's an end in sight. Oh, I hope so. My plan is if I get sick to move out here, I can hook it up, it has power. I have a refrigerator and a freezer in my bed. At what point would plan B go into effect? As soon as I start showing any symptoms, even if that's a fever, I'm not gonna take a chance. I'm not gonna take a risk and just walk around with a mask and hope that it'll go away. Now, what if your wife got sick? I don't know what that would look like. I would probably care for her. Keep her separated. While Michigan has fewer COVID cases now, Kelly worries it's only temporary. The state plans to relax stay-at-home measures at the end of May. I don't know how she would live with herself if she brought the virus home to me. I just really, 
am scared during this pandemic. A lot of the general public isn't taking this serious from what I can see. It's very serious to me because it's my wife's health. There's always the fear of getting into a car accident while we're driving lights and sirens or being in a dangerous situation where, you know, a, a gun or a knife is involved. But this is something completely different that has n knocked us down almost. I've never felt this doing this career. It's very real. We just have to get up and keep fighting it every day. All right, I gotta get going. It's okay. See you tomorrow. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Love you. Love you. Okay? Yeah. It'll be all right. Mm hmm? Just 12 hours. 13 ish. I know, but even when you're home, I don't know if you're okay. I'm okay. Just wear your mask. Okay. All right, love you. I'll call you in a little bit. All right. All right. Andrea has been very emotional since this all started, even before it actually officially hit Michigan. I think she knew it was coming. She already has a lot of anxiety as it is, and this just has been tenfold on top of it. It's hard to keep reassuring her when I don't know myself what's gonna happen next. Well, the fact that there's not a lot of open parking spaces is not usually a good sign at this time of day. It means we're very busy and day crews are still here when they should have probably been going home an hour or two or three ago. This is the part of the day where you have to psych yourself to go up inside. Uh, as you kind of know what's coming and it's not really so much avoiding it, but just try to take a deep breath and forget it for a minute. I get six, any cough, shortness of breath, fever? No, sir. Okay, you have a good night. You too. Thank Go you in and get sir. some laughs while you're punching in. Can I have some... some french fries and- <laughs> A large Coke. A large Diet Coke with light ice. <laughs> <laughs> but the threat and the fear is still there. Nobody really knows what's happening right now. How are you? I'm good. Good. Yes. I would shake your hand. I know, but same. I'm not doing it. No, I know. I don't Therapist Margie Rose now was hired to help them process the trauma that comes with the job. It's been a different kind of a week for you. It's been a different kind of month. Yeah a month that feels like it's been about six months. I'm sure. Yeah. So. so what changes have you seen in your job? Um, fear. Fear not only with coworkers, fear with patients, family members. It's an odd time. You know, normally we can kind of escape from the call, I guess, after the fact, and this seems to linger. There's so much uncertainty. Are you having it right now? No, it does it like Okay. Wrong. Okay. Oh, man, I'm so scared. I know. I never had this happen. You mm -hmm. know, I, my lungs keep going like yeah. that. It's been a whirlwind. I don't want to die. I understand. Do you want to go to the hospital? Yes. Feels like a tornado coming through that doesn't pick and choose. It just aims right at you. Yeah, it's in the building. Yeah. How many? Don't know. Enough. Enough of everybody, yeah. Enough. See you guys. All right, have a good night, thanks. It's harder to shake it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I wonder if we're going to keep running nonstop. I wonder if they're all going to be COVID positive. <coughs> Any nausea or vomiting at all? Yes. I think it's just a lot of unknown. Are you feeling nauseous right now? No. No. They're always. There is some elevations. So we're gonna get you to the hospital as fast as we can, okay? How you doing? Stay awake. How far are we out, Kelly? Maybe five. Boom, 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 that's there, 135, 32. My 
my wife is behind me 100%. My fear is if she gets sick now, it's because of me, and I don't want to do that to her. Hello. Hi. Hey, what's up? Nothing. What are you doing? Just sitting in the back. How's work going? It's okay. Just tired. You sound pretty drained. Mm-hmm. I think you're like a tank. You just keep going. Until a monster takes me down. Mm -hmm. We got a call. I got to get going. All right, I love you. is on scene. Oh, and fire is too now, actually, so. Person inside hasn't been tested for COVID, but it was somebody that's inside. It's an arrest, so we're going to count up. Okay. Do you rhythm check real quick? Sicily. Still Sicily. Come, 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 Mr. R135. Doses of Narcan was given as well with no change. It's been assisted the entire time, unknown if COVID related or not. Just call and see if we can do time of death and doctor if you want us to transport. Copy, 0015, thanks, Flynn. Copy, 0015 and Dr. Flynn. Got everything, got the drug box, got that, got the, everything else is in here. Got that one garbage bag. Have you seen Kelly change through all this? Yes. In what ways? <laughs> Go ahead. She's pulling away from me. I feel like I'm not getting direct answers from her about her feelings. Why do you think that is? To protect me. She's in a line of work where they just shove it down and go on to the next call. I worry. She could go to work in two, three days from now. She could be in the hospital. What would you do if that happened? I would lose my mind. <laughs> um, she's my person. I uh, understand why she does what she does, but I don't like that she's forced to put her life on the line. That's what first responder is. 